Good morning. It's my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Professor Hugh Liu from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, who is currently the Associate Dean as well as the Zi Yuan Rachel Professor over there. Uh, in fact, Hugh was one of our faculty here. Uh, he, joined, he joined this department after uh, uh, some small period of time uh, in University of Virginia after he got his uh, PhD from UT Austin and he joined this department. Uh, after a couple of years of uh, service and also a very good opportunity for him uh, to uh, uh, go back to uh, Shanghai to become the associate dean over there. Uh, he was already uh, promoted to a full professor in this department. And he, during uh, his uh, tenure uh, process uh, in this department, he was very uh, successful in uh, uh, the wireless area. For example, he was the inventor of this uh, 3G uh, uh, TDS CDMA, as well as a lot of uh, uh, background uh, patents uh, for uh, uh, 4G uh, technology. And he also published two books and also uh, got this uh, uh, National Science Foundation Career Award and ONR uh, Young Investigator Award. And he is also the IGPOI Fellow. So let's welcome uh, Hugh Liu's uh, coming back to uh, give us a very uh, wonderful talk today. OK, uh, thanks, Jenny. And uh, it's very nice to be back. Uh, you know, it's not a couple of years. I spent 15 years here. That's, uh, that's a long time. So there are really uh, two purposes uh, for my today's trip. Uh, one is to, of course, share with you some of the uh, research work I've been doing. Uh, the other is try to facilitate some kind of a um, strategic collaboration between the two big universities. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, the opportunity is really immense. So I don't assume uh, all of you know where Shanghai Jiao Tong University is. So let's uh, start with a little bit background. Uh, we are just uh, in a town across the water. It's a big water. Um, but uh, if you hop on Delta uh, 589 in 10 hours, you will, be, you will be there. It's a big city. And uh, usually the sky is not that blue. I'm pretty sure it's uh, artificially inflated. Uh, but this is a city of uh, 20 million people. Uh, when they decide to show up, New Year's Eve, 2 million people, that spells disaster. But it's, it's a good place to be in Shanghai. My campus, fortunately, is not uh, that close to the city. It's about 50 miles away, but it's a huge campus. Most people uh, take their bike to, to, uh, to classrooms, and uh, it's very, very much uh, where Western life. So I'm going to spend more time on this, I think, uh, at the end. I'd like to present an opportunity to, for you to do some exchange and uh, spend some time on my campus. <clears throat> so uh, today, I think uh, the main purpose is to uh, introduce this tool called the Mobile Communication Networks. And I'm going to start with some background to motivate this research. And to start with, uh, uh, I would say, relatively new concept it's called 3G Mobile Networks. Uh, you probably have heard a lot about mobile communication networks and all that. So the emphasis was always on communication part. Communication this, communication part. Uh, now we look at this uh, in a different uh, angle. We try to say, well, beside communication resource, what else can you do? So come to a so-called 3C, which stands for communications, computing, and caching. Okay? And uh, we'll see how that will change the landscape. Uh, and also, there's, uh, I will introduce you some of the relatively hard theoretical problems we want to try to tackle. And also, I'm going to wrap it up with, uh, with a very large-scale campus network, which is uh, pretty fascinating. OK, <clears throat> first, the background part. Uh, this is not a, a, a chart I particularly like, but uh, is people use it that a lot and really tells the story. So uh, the chart is a bit messy. Let me show you where I wanted to focus. This really shows two parts. One you can see, one is so-called core network which is really you consider fibers and all this that happen in the background. So you can see that the, the core network, in terms of its uh, connectivity and speed, has gone up, goes up steadily uh, over the past like 30, 40 years. So it has to be pretty healthy. Now, for wireless, usually the technology comes in in generations, just like your iPhone, iPhone 1, 2, 3, 4. So uh, in wireless, uh, usually each generation is about 10 years. So you go on, you say, wow, second generation, that's probably 40 years ago, then third generation, fourth generation. Now we are about in the fifth generation. 
So by asking people, you know, which generation of wireless you start to work on, you can pretty much tell his age. Okay, I, am, I started my career in 3G, so I'm in my 40s. And if someone say, well, I started in 2G, then he's, uh, he's much older. So uh, wireless has been uh, enjoying a lot of tremendous growth. Uh, the rate, you can see here, going up is slower than the Y line. Uh, for actually a very simple reason, because wireless is, is much, much harder. Uh, why is harder? Because in wireless, you only have limit, limited spectrum. The spectrum costs a lot of money. You know, AT&T maybe acquires certain spectrum for several billion dollars, this is very common. Uh, the other thing is that wireless is uh, unpredictable, right? You're in this room, you're in an elevator, you're underground, you're on the move, all these conditions will change. So if you have a fiber, I mean, it's steady, but if it's wireless, then it's unpredictable. In order to increase speed, it really costs a lot of uh, uh, power and the resources. Uh, the last one, I don't know whether you understand that's in wireless, a big challenge is wireless is interference dominated, okay? So if you have a line going to your office and uh, you are pretty much stable, you don't worry about others, but if you start to emitting radio signal, all these will interfere with each other. So that will really dictate the rate you can, you can transmit and uh, that's uh, um, the wireless management, interference management is a big challenge because you really cannot uh, corner a wireless signal, say so stay here, it goes everywhere. It's uh, sometimes out of control. So the big challenge uh, upon us is that in the last 10 years, um, not the last 10 years, five years, all of a sudden we realize that wireless is more attractive than wireline, okay? You don't want to tell this to the wireline people, but that's the, the everybody is uh, looking at, the, you know, uh, watching TVs, uh, uh, you know, doing interactive media and all that on your, on your smartphone, on your tablets, and the majority of the internet traffic is actually shift towards wireless. Uh, the prediction is that 1,000 times of the traffic increase in 10 years, okay? And I, I'm, I've been in wireless for 20 years. I can tell you, we're not ready for that. We're not ready for that. So how do we address this? Uh, usually, I mean, when you graduate, you go to real life. When there's a problem, what you usually do is uh, you throw resources at it. You throw money at it. Hope it will go away. That's what I've been doing in the past, like 1G, 3G, 3rd generation, all is up. So traditionally, my computer is stuck. Traditionally, we have this, uh, in wireless communication, we have this so-called three-horse approach. Every time AT&T say, I, I'm out of capacity, these people are, are not only talking, they are texting, now they are, they are streaming, and I'm out of capacity. So what do we do is we turn around and say, well, we need more spectrum. Because spectrum, if you double the spectrum, you double the capacity. So in 5G, in order to cope with this 1,000 time increase, this, this proposal come out and say, well, we need 10 times the spectrum. Okay, for that I get 10 tax. And I need 10, more, 10 times the sales. You know, in wireless, each cell, if you increase it, each cell get reused the, uh, the, uh, the uh, spectrum. So if you decrease the cell, it deploy more, then you have more capacity. The second generation cell is 10 kilometers. Third generation is uh, one kilometers. Fourth generation, 300 meters. Now they are saying fifth generation is gonna be 30 meters radiant. So every house will have a, have a base station there. So this is, this is what they predict. They said, well, we just so, so uh, more resource that. And also, the uh, so-called high efficiency. They say, we're going to try to utilize the spectrum more efficiently. And the latest proposal is to go out the building, and uh, you saw those uh, uh, TV tower, or no, uh, cellular towers, right? Before, you will see two antennas. Now you see four. Now they are proposing a whole wall of antenna on side of the building, literally in the out of thousands. They call it the MIMO, uh, the massive MIMO. So they will have a huge antenna array, which does this uh, um, magic thing is called beamforming. But if you look at a chart, I've been in this business for 20 years. I look at the chart, I say, I'm almost want to say, are you guys nuts? It's this, this is obviously is not sustainable, okay? The one out time increase in 10 years is not gonna stop in 10 years. After the next 10 years, it's gonna be another 1,000 times. You cannot go back and say, I, I, I want another 10 times the spectrum and all that. So this will not scale when it's not sustainable. You really have to look at this uh, from a different angle. So how? Now, you have to come back to really the source of the problem. They claim there's a capacity shortage. There's a one time, one thousand time capacity uh, traffic increase. But is this really the problem? Let's look at that. So I don't want to do the whole thing again and again. I go back and say, wow, is really there's a capacity shortage. 
Uh, I had this question, uh, I saw this question uh, with this uh, um, example. I don't know, it's two years ago or three years ago. There was a huge uh, storm in Beijing. The, the water comes down so fast, in five minutes, there's over flooding, okay? So China Mobile, you see uh, all these uh, cars, it's in the water. So China Mobile was asked, after all this is done, why don't you send uh, warning short messages to all, all the other subscribers? You have, you have this many, almost everybody uses China Mobile phone. They came back and they said, wow, we did an excellent job. Fantastic job. There are 20 million people in Beijing, right? We sent their, their text message in 30, min in 30, 30 minutes, we almost covers everybody. So in 30 minutes, everybody receive a text message saying that storm is coming or storm has passed, you know, you, you need to uh, watch out. So you look at this example, you tell me, is this is a capacity problem? Think about it. The same warning message to 20 million people takes 30 minutes to send. Is this a capacity problem? It's not a capacity problem. It's almost stupidity problem. Because the same message you send, all you need to do is broadcast it. Everybody receive it, right? In 30 minutes, you can have CNN cover the whole thing. Because it doesn't really matter which user use it. You, they all use the same, uh, they all receive the same message. So in this particular problem, you can see, this is an architectural problem, not capacity problem. If you want to send the message one by one, deliver it to all these people, almost like I have that lecture to all of you individually, then it will take how many, how long? But right now I'm broadcasting to everybody. So, but you say, wow, well, and, and that's, that's easy. Show a message, I mean, this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's an easy problem to solve. How about, so what is really the capacity uh, demand these days? I can tell you, the majority of the demand comes from the multimedia traffic, multimedia traffic. So here's what, what's happened. In the past years, most of the internet usage gets shifted to mobile devices. That's a given. I mean, you don't have to the statistics will show you that right now, most of the multimedia, you look at your iPhone, how much time uh, you spend on your smartphone and the tablet, it's majority of the uh, internet traffic. But more interestingly, you look at this, uh, this uh, the second chart. It says that the growth, the really the, the, the uh, bandwidth uh, uh, consumption is mostly, mostly for video, okay, and other multimedia. Texting doesn't change much. If you want to actually uh, do, even do a, a Video conference with someone, which I don't, I, I'm not sure how many people does a video course. That's probably a 10 times capacity increase from 10, 10 kilobit per second to 100. Certainly, it doesn't warrant this 1,000. So, majority of that is in, in multimedia. So, look at the, how the behave, our behavior changed over the past like one or two decades in wireless. Before we do voice, then you do mobile internet. Right now, we are more interested at least the majority of traffic is mobile content, media content. Now I'll ask you this question. The, behave, the behaviors, the consumption has changed. Has the architecture changed at all? Right now you want to pass all these nice multimedia contents to a lot of multi, uh, 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 wireless users, maybe at different locations. What we're trying to do is to stuff all these through this bottleneck, okay? We want to deliver them one by one through this bottleneck. So, the really, the, the, the immediate reaction is that, wow, I have to open this up, right? I have to open the bottleneck, otherwise I'll be, not be able to accommodate this, this much uh, increase in traffic. But is this really the problem? Do we really need to open up? There's a traffic jam, what are you doing? You're gonna be more cars? You're gonna build more road, right? That's the immediate reaction. But you need to think about why people go out and drive. If they want to drive, go out and eat in the restaurant, I mean, you can open car, or open roads, you can, you, can, you, can, you can build more cars, but the another alternative is that you deliver the dish to their home. Then there will be no traffic in the first place, right? So this problem down deep is actually not a capacity issue is really the architecture. The architecture of the current wireless networks is so-called connection-based. So each individual, you want to view YouTube, has to be a connection. Someone want to view YouTube 10 seconds later, you know, watch uh, Marshall Lynch interview, 10 seconds later, you have to have another connection. That is where the real problem is. So to address that, 
uh, my, you know, all these things is to motivate a different way of thinking. Before you say it's capacity limited, I will tell you that the, the, the real problem is not capacity. It's really the architecture is not, wrong, uh, is, uh, not right. The architecture is not right for content delivery. So if you want to continue with a connection-based architecture, it's not going to solve the, uh, the uh, content distribution problem. You have to think it otherwise. Try to re-architect the mobile network, at least part of it, to make it distribution-oriented. So um, <coughs> I would say that this observation is by no means view, uh, new. Actually, in the wireline world, people already realize that. So right now, we are in the, in the internet world, right? Everything is IP and all that. But IP, internet connection, is really bad in terms of content distribution. Okay, I don't know if you realize that. Send, so think about this. If you want to read a book, what do you do? Do you go to the author to get this book? The second one, you want the book, you also go to the author, of course he's gonna be overwhelmed, right? But you think about it, if you know the identity of this book, you can go to the author, or you can go to Amazon, you maybe go to library, or maybe go to your peers. As long as the identity is there, the same book, you can get anywhere. You don't really need to overwhelm the source. In other words, you do not need the so-called link session between the host and the clients, and also this host-centric network. So I, I'm telling you is that IP, as powerful as it is, is bad for content distribution. Streaming is bad for content distribution. So people realize that, and uh, they try to solve this problem with the so-called peer-to-peer. So instead of going to the source, if someone next to you has a copy of this content, just go in and share it, and also content distribution network. But things are getting better, actually. Uh, the uh, future of the, uh, this content distribution is moved towards so-called named data object, okay? So instead of saying, go into YouTube, watch this video, you don't have to do that anymore. All you do is to yell to the cloud and say, I want Marshawn Lynch's interview. And it can be anywhere, and it can be delivered to you. So you don't have to over, uh, overwhelm the, the source. And this whole thing is called the information-centric network, which really decoupling the source and uh, uh, the clients. You don't have to have, have a, oh, decoupling the, the source of its creator. So I can be the author of the book, but my book can be anywhere. You don't have to come to me to get a copy. Um, another thing which is happening also in the um, uh, content world is that not everybody wants their, their, their personalized content distribution services, right? But in reality, a personalized service is really the mashup of all these contents, gadgets, and all these things, okay? So you can see that if you have received a, a particular service, what you have here, you are really receiving a collection of all these objects. Do they have to all come from the same source? Of course not. Some of the clock are already local, some of the weather you already got it from somewhere else. All you need to do is to match them up. So matching them up, the user experience is guaranteed, but you are getting away from the connection. You really ha don't have to make a connection to receive that kind of service. Uh, on the other hand, in order to do that, what do you need in addition to the communication resource? You will also need very smart devices, the computation power, in order to match this up, in order to know where to get your objects. Another thing is that you have to have caching capability, memories. So you can collect them, you put it uh, in your local uh, uh, device, and when you need this service, you can recreate them. So that means that uh, in order to uh, have this content distribution, you will not only need communication resource, but also you need computing resource and caching resource. And that really lead me to the, uh, um, uh, this whole design thing uh, for mobile networks. So, Again, as I alluded to early, you really, in the next uh, future wireless network, you really want to move away from, move, not completely away, but move away from a mobile communication network to literally a mobile 3C network. You will consider this network is equipped with resource of communication capability, computing capability, and caching capability. All these are open, all these are flexible. So uh, I'm going to just skip some of the details, but you know that communications, when we talk about it, is really frequency, time, space, uh, modulation, the, 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 the whole uh, hardcore, maybe sometimes even uh, different networks. You have 4G networks, you have Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, and all that. So that, that's already given. But in computation and caching, you are open to new possibilities. You have intelligence, you have 
network management, you have a, a data processing power, you can recreate the, 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 uh, the uh, reality, like what's uh, recently released by Microsoft, what is this holograms. It's really a lot of computations and uh, recreation and also caching capability. So now I'm going to give you an example of how this, so if you all put them together and consider this is the resource that can be uh, take advantage of your mobile network, let's take an example. Uh, I mean, we know that communication has diminished trend, but in terms of computation and also uh, caching, it's almost always scalable. It's cheap, it's coming to you fast, and uh, it's uh, 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 sustainable as well. So going back to this uh, example uh, we had earlier, now if you have intelligence in the network, now you ask them how you're going to send 20 million uh, warning messages. You're going to make it simple. I'm not going to have a connection-based architecture. I'm going to have a broadcasting architecture where I send one text message, everybody receive it and share it, job done. Okay, it takes what, 100 bits. It take what, one out of a million seconds and the entire thing is done. So you can see as soon as you change the architecture, the, uh, the uh, picture uh, become being different. Now it's a, it's a fun part. How about multimedia? How about how do we do deliver multimedia? I asked you earlier, you say, wow, well, I want uh, uh, this uh, multimedia and I want them to be personalized. I want to be in, on my device in certain format and the, at the time I want to view it. So how do you get away with this kind of personalized service and not uh, connection based? Is it even possible? I want to watch this now. The other person want to watch it 10 seconds later. Okay? So instead of making connection, how else can you do it? Well, we have the analysis on your behaviors. We know that statistically, all of you are pretty much watching the same thing. Okay? So 5% of contents representing 80% of consumption. So at certain points, we know that the majority of you are watching Super Bowl. Afterwards, you're all viewing this, uh, this uh, clips and uh, interviews and all that. Although you have personalized service, but personalized service is nothing more than common modules, because the contents are the same, but a time shift version. But also add some individual displays. Okay, you want this clock there, you want your own avatar here, you want your own logo, these are personalized service. And the video is either live or on demand, or some cooking show you want to watch, that's, that's archived, but these are three class types. Now if you understand the nature of these contents, what can you do? you immediately realize that I do not need individual connections. If I'm an operator, AT&T, what I can do is I'm gonna push the popular contents, which use up, say, 50% of my bandwidth to your device. Okay, in the extreme case, what that means, I'm gonna push my digital library to your device. Okay, so when you try to consume it, you click, it's already local, you play it, smooth, no traffic, no fee, okay? But is this technology available? I can tell you that this is very common already. I mean, we, are, we have something out there. We have the cellular network. The equivalent of cellular network is really highway. You go anywhere, you are individualized, you can go any, uh, do anything any, you want. But broadcasting is really like the bullet train. If most of the traffic from here to San Francisco is actually between these two cities, building a bullet train will solve majority of the problem. You don't have to drive individual cars, okay? You combine them together, I'll tell you how much pushing can accomplish with one megahertz, with that six megahertz bandwidth. Six megahertz is a, a fraction of the 3G or 4G network bandwidth. I can literally deliver thousands of songs, all these movies, all this uh, uh, video clip to your device, okay? So when you click it, we're looking at the picture like this. A convergent network of cellular, which is individual based, also a broadcasting network, which is offloading, offloading. I take them off the street, I put them on the bullet train. What's the benefit of that? When you click, you want something. You thought you are watching YouTube, right? But it's not. The YouTube, beside YouTube, Video clips is already on your phone. You click it, no delay. No meter, okay? 
You don't have to count or say how much uh, 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 traffic I've used this far, whether I'm exceeding my limits, because this is already sent it to you. No buffering, okay? You look at the streaming, it's high quality. You don't have to uh, experience any glitch. It's all about QE, okay? So this can be done. So how much do you gain out of this? I'm gonna skip down, to where we're, we're doing some uh, analysis and uh, 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 theoretical, we'll model the user behavior, model the traffic. So let me ask you this question. Can you imagine that I have this much bandwidth? If I dedicate a small portion of that to broadcasting, to content pushing to your device, and I look at the overall number of happy, satisfied subscribers, what will be the relation? So if I say I build a bullet train from here to, to San Francisco, how much more users I can accommodate? So I give it one megahertz, what's the increase? I give it two megahertz, what will be the increase? Is it like linear, is it logarithmic, or is it exponential? What do you imagine? Okay, well the, the result will surprise you. Actually, this is an exponential relation, meaning that if indeed statistical analysis right, the majority of your viewing experience actually is pretty much concentrated on certain contents, then by taking them off the network, by delivering them directly to your device, the number of total satisfied users goes up exponentially with respect to the broadcasting bandwidth. So this is how powerful it is, okay? That's why in, 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 in cities like China, they, they build a lot of trains, you know, they, they take people off the road. But if your distribution, if your going, uh, uh, being divided is very really scattered, okay, you don't have this really nice distribution, then it's a different problem. So uh, I'm gonna give you, a, now we address the short message uh, challenge and also we look at the uh, <coughs> content distribution. I'll give you an exa another example of uh, how by adding communication, by adding computing and uh, uh, caching capability to co communication network, how much better job you can do in another application which is called sensor network. Okay, I'm gonna do this quickly. So sensor networks or vehicle and all that, uh, the internet of things, uh, is predicted to be the m main application for future wireless. The current wireless system connecting people. But down the road they say, well, there are, there are the billions of devices which need to be connected. They're not human, but they probably uh, 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 were well gonna be a, in huge demand. So let's look at this chart. I have a sensor network. All these, all these uh, little sensors are wirelessly connected. And I ask these sensors to do one job. I ask them to measure the temperatures and tell me what is the average temperature in this, in this area. Or what is the maximum temperature it gets, okay? So how would you do it before? You see, well, you do the measurement and tell me what do you got? And send it to, to the home base. You do this for all sensors at the end. Sorry. At the end, I'm gonna collect all the data and I'm gonna look at the maximum value and the minimum value. And I can tell you, in order to do that, in this particular example, you have to consume 30 units of communication resources. Okay, you have to do this again. Okay. Now this is because what? This is because these nodes are dumb. All they need to do is collect it and send it out. They don't do any intelligent processing or computing, right? They don't even have storage. They say, well, I'm just gonna send it out. Okay. Now, by injecting the, uh, uh, the uh, computing or caching capability, the job is gonna be easier. Well, how do you calculate the minimum? How do, how do you calculate the, the uh, uh, maximum value? Easy. At nodes, you'll do the comparison, right? I'm gonna give you a very simple example. But afterwards, you're not gonna send both there. You have to take the maximum value and send it out. And you aggregate, eventually, you accomplish the calculation by only using six units of communication resource. Okay, so this is another example. Okay, now you see why this is helpful. I give you more examples like this. You will immediately understand. Now we have surveillance camera everywhere, right? Okay, you, some of the, in London, I think it's uh, all covered. Sometimes it's HD. Imagine all these cameras, sometimes mounted uh, wirelessly, sometimes uh, uh, through the, through the uh, network. If I have to 
collect all these high definition videos, Professor Jenning Huang understands this well, it's gonna be overwhelming. It's really need a big, big, big crowd to do that. But in reality, most of those are not, not so useful. You have those cameras there to do one job, actually to do multiple jobs. You want to do identification when some you know, funny person show up, you want to make sure that you do not want to do this all this in the cloud in the headquarter. If you want to distribute it, actually have individual sensors or camera performing this job, your reliance or the backhaul traffic is gonna be much more reduced. That makes sense? Very simple. Now, in terms of crisis, also, you can do identification, but certainly not aggregating all the traffic. So you can see that in the Internet of Things, the normal mobile network will have to do a job, but they have to do it differently. They have to do it by in putting intelligence on the nodes, intelligence means computation, caching, and all the, all the others. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to tell you that uh, in the communication, I don't know how many of you want to uh, do uh, wireless communications, but wireless communication is very hard. Uh, in, in what way? In the way that, I, I, I'm not gonna put other people down, but say that, in, in other words, when you have something working, okay, you're happy with it, okay? It, it works, you know, it's, uh, it's already everybody, I have 30 million people using it, so I'm happy. But in the wireless world, what we do is, we really have to look into the bottom, the limit of it. So we not only need to know this thing works. I, I already show you nice charts, already a uh, heuristic uh, result. You understand that it has potential. But we need to understand that how much potential is out there. In order for us to build a wireless network which costs billions of dollars, we really need to understand theoretically what is the limit, okay? We have done a very good job so far is that we understand if you give me a certain wireless resource, spectrum, antennas, and all that, we can tell you precisely how many bits you can transmit over this network. I can tell you precisely this. I mean, this is well installed. Although it's challenging and, uh, uh, over the years, but we came to that uh, 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 result. Now, what happens if you're not only dealing with spectrum, you're also dealing with caching, memories, and you're also dealing with computational power. So if all these resources are put into the same wireless network, then you tell me how much work, uh, how, how, uh, how much better you can accomplish your job of content delivery. Understand, we want to understand theoretically what is the limit. That turned out to be very, very, very difficult. This is really a new era of uh, uh, information theory. So we have done something in this regard. We, uh, the first thing we, we uh, came together is that we say we're gonna redefine so-called bit rate, okay? So if your performance criteria is about how many bits get delivered, how many cars going through the road, you come up with the same equation. I mean, your objective function is to look at how many bits or how many cars on the road. You're not gonna come up with a, with a, with a better uh, solution. So we change that by looking at the so-called content rate. What that means is I'm gonna look at the number of happy subscribers receiving their desired content, okay? I'm going to look at that as the performance measure. And then I'm looking at, okay, by adding more resources to there, how much uh, 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 improvement I can experience. Uh, this turned out to be difficult. Why? You look at this chart, I can tell you, you can understand that. From left side, let's say these are the contents, X1, X2 representing different contents. Right side, Y1, Y2, YK, these are subscribers, these are you, okay? You look at them and you say, wow, well, some of them want certain portion of the contents, others want a peculiar one. So you can see this graph which connects the contents or content objects to, your, to the subscribers. You can see that the information before where we used to in unit testing, we delivered this one by one. Now it's not the case. Some of the information or objects, they are private, which means they are of interest to one user. Some of them are not. They are of interest to a subset of the users. So they are neither completely private or completely common. And on top of that, your device is not only dealing with only the wireless channel, right? The wireless channel is the resource. You also have caching capability, computer capability. By adding them together, how better a job I can do, okay? So from information viewpoints, we're studying that, we don't have a, a solution yet. It's, it's, uh, but there are some interesting observations. Let me ask you this. 
So for the audience, for all of you, to receive the desired contents you want, okay, what is the minimum amount of wireless resource that needed to accomplish that? And what is the mechanism that can reach this point? I'm not sure I understand. Uh, let me rephrase the question. What is, so you can different ways to deliver your content. What is the most efficient way of delivering the content to all of you? Make all of you happy, but consume the least amount of uh, uh, communication resource, least amount of spectrum. You all have different requirements. You have this content, that one has uh, uh, different uh, uh, interesting contents, but I mean, I consider this very diverse. And yet, I want to accomplish, accommodate all your requirements using the minimum amount of bandwidth. How this can be done? We're looking at the theoretical limit. Any suggestions? Okay. Huh? Broadcast every day. Excellent. So the bond, actually, we know, is you're broadcasting everything and you store everything on your device. So when you have unlimited caching capability, the least amount of bandwidth required to satisfy user is accomplished when doing broadcasting. Okay, so what is the maximum amount of bandwidth need to accommodate all your, all your, all your, all your resource, all, all your requirements? This is what we're doing now. This is assuming we don't have caching capability. You want something, I didn't send it to you, and two seconds later, Professor Jenny Huang wants also this same video, I have to send another and use twice bandwidth. Okay, so we're literally at this in between. The worst actually is being implemented right now. Unicasting everything. But the best is achieved, of course, assuming you have unlimited the caching capability, which we don't. So in between, if your caching capability, your cabin, uh, computing capability is, is, uh, is not of infinite number, what is the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the zone and all that, it's, it's really an open research topic which we are working on. Okay, <clears throat> now, let me change gear to another uh, areas of my research. Now one thing which is different, I, I experienced, I said I spent 15 years here, um, uh, the, the research in Chinese university and here is that over there, you only, not only do theory, you have a huge army of uh, uh, graduate students and also faculty members, but they are very tied to industry. They are very tied, they actually do a lot of uh, uh, implementational, uh, uh, non-implementational practical things. So in Shanghai Jiao University, if you go there, you will see probably the world biggest wireless uh, test bed. So in this campus, uh, I'm talking about two miles, two miles, I, I don't know how big that is. It's, it's a huge campus. So we deployed literally almost 100 antennas, you can consider them base stations. And all these antennas are fiber connected. We laid fiber over almost 200 kilometers, all this fiber, connect everything, okay? And uh, this is really an all fiber wireless network. It's all software, we no longer has big boxes out there. It's everything condensed and also centralized cloud, okay? This is called CRAM, cloud uh, uh, radio access network. So consider everything. And uh, uh, it's all in software. More, uh, I think another big uh, breakthrough we want to do is that this is called cellless. So before in wireless, you have little cells, right? The cell doesn't have to be there. Cell is there because you don't have enough processing power. If you connect everything to the centralized office, then the cell disappear. Just go there and the, wherever, however antenna you can uh, connect to, they will serve you. So this is a cellless uh, network. Uh, we're, we're doing this. As I said, the converged network notion, not only the cellular network, but we also have a broadcasting uh, 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 coverage. Uh, by the way, broadcasting is very sensitive. In China, it's illegal. I'm pretty sure that the, uh, so we have to go through all the hoops and to get permission to have a broadcasting network on top of that. And uh, you see that this is, uh, we do this uh, in collaboration with Huawei, and these are their, their um, mm, uh, base stations, uh, processing units. So what we do is that they, in Shanghai Jordan University, when people are still doing 3G, our faculty member, our students, they are giving little devices, they can experience 4G. So when people are you know, commercially doing 4G, the campus, the students can experience 5G. 
So, I mean, just two or three years ago, our students already have 100 megabit per second to his mobile device everywhere on campus. Of course, we, we do this uh, with, uh, they do their commercialization uh, uh, down the road. We also do our uh, experiments. So this is a chart which we showed early on about converged network broadcasting contents, coupling with the unicasting. And our students, uh, they work together, they put together a server, they, they, they roll some software on the, on the Android tablet, and they enable that. So this is an example where uh, this is on a tablet, but also we have this interactive display, which is touch screen, and it has broadcasting capability. All the news are get broadcasted, and also the, the uh, 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 internet connected. So this is really the, the concept uh, I mentioned realized on this giant, giant tablet. And the other uh, activities we're doing since we have the network, so we, we may as well put on the campus shuttle bus and uh, uh, some collaboration with uh, robots, displays, mechanical engineering department, there are small vehicles, and uh, uh, the mobile medicine. So all these kind of things. I don't know whether this is 5G, but let me summarize uh, some of the observations I had. So all this talk is about there's a really incoming needs, exponential growth of content distribution, content consumption in mobile networks. In order to accommodate that, you have to change the way of thinking. You cannot do what you have done before. Just keep on adding more roads, expanding and all that. You need to think about why people go on the road in the first place. And if you eliminate that, the traffic problem will be alleviated. So, and uh, uh, we, we, the objective is to really increase the content distribution efficiency. I mean, if you think about, I need to view YouTube, I have to go to YouTube server. That's the wrong mentality, because you can get your content by not going to the source. And uh, we do that by looking at the uh, different possibilities. One of that, which turned out to be very uh, powerful, is to call 3C mobile networks, okay? Putting scalable resource, like the computation resource, like the caching resource, will change the design paradigm, and really change the landscape. And uh, what they do is that, uh, you know, you, you, you're, you're putting intelligence there to really to take advantage of the content diversity and network diversity. If all your requirement on campus is extremely individualized, there's no overlap, there's no statistical uh, uh, diversity, then I can do nothing, okay? If everybody, their content is one-to-one -one talk, just like uh, what we had in the short messaging in the, in the phone calls, then there's nothing to be done. Uh, the last prediction I have is uh, because I've been asked many times, I've done uh, 3G networks and 4G networks, they always come and ask me, what do you think is the biggest change upcoming for the fifth, five generation? I tell them that you look at AT&T, right? Lo look at Google, look at Amazon, look at the, the Apple and all that. I really think the next big player is not gonna be the cellular infrastructure provider. It's probably not the, the, uh, the uh, phone manufacturers. It's gonna be the OTT, over the top content provider they can actually change really how the game is played. Because they have the contents, they can get into your, your, your network resource and the vertical in the integration, and that really can profoundly change the landscape. So that's the, the, uh, the research part. I wanna spend the last five minutes uh, talk about uh, collaboration, potential collaboration between the two universities. Uh, I know a lot of you are undergraduate student here, and really I want to extend my invitation to you. So we're talking about with the department and also um, the university about exchange programs, okay? So President uh, Michael Young has been to my campus, I spent time with him, and he said, well, there's an upcoming uh, Pac-12 basketball game is gonna be on my campus later this year. So he really wants to facilitate all this uh, 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 exchange and uh, social and academic uh, collaborations. So I don't know how many of you have been there, but uh, I want to share some information so you know that what to expect if you decide to do that. So right now I'm with this uh, so-called school of uh, electrical and the information. I don't I don't like this number. This is a long name. Uh, electrical information, uh, electronic information, electrical engineering. So think about it as uh, EECS. Okay, it's essentially EECS, all lumped into one. So this is our building. Over 7,000 students, undergraduates and graduates. Okay, and all these 500 faculty members. A lot of them, I won't say a lot of them, but some of them like me, uh, US educated, we go back. Uh, 80 million US dollar research funding last year, which is not a big number, but that's one thing, one catch is that. Over there, all the graduate students are free. 
So if you're a faculty member, you get your research funding, you have to, don't have to pay the graduate students for their food, for their lodging, for their salary. It's all, it's all free, it's all covered. So all these are really actually spent on the research. Now, you have witnessed a lot of uh, growth in the United States, but I really encourage you, I think, if you have a chance, get exposed to different culture, different uh, activities, really help you open your mind and uh, help you uh, have uh, new kinds of uh, creativity. Uh, obviously, I'm doing wireless, so I, I, I do collaboration with Huawei. In 20 years, they are already number one, number one, world number one, uh, telecom equipment manufacturers, okay? So before it was Notel, it was Lucent, it was all this, going bankruptcy left or right. And right now, Alcatel, right now the only competition to them is Ericsson, okay? I think uh, in this year, they, they probably will be uh, surpassed as well. So uh, we, we have Microsoft our, in our backyard, and it's, it's all going strong. But uh, how many of you have heard Alibaba? Okay. Alibaba is the world's biggest IPO, what is 50 million, ridiculous number. How many of you, what exactly does Alibaba do? Okay, very few. Okay, so this is, this is the material process. You go there, you will, you will see that it's very uh, interesting, very creative uh, business model. Now, on this chart, which company is even bigger than Alibaba? Uh, do you, have you ever heard of a company called Tencent? Tencent is like $70 billion. They're even bigger than Alibaba. What, what do they do? I mean, I can tell you they do a lot of, they are on every single mobile phones in China, okay? So you don't know what they do, I encourage you to study that and this is, this is really up to me. Now, who is the number one phone manufacturer in the world at this stage, right now? In Samsung, who is number two? You probably don't know this company, this is Xiaomi. This is an amazing story. I sit with their, with their CEO, and this company, how many years old? Four years old, world number two phone manufacturer with a market cap of $50 billion. So you see all this, I, I, I mean, if you come to uh, my university, I'll set up programs for you, I'll get to set you an internship, so you can interact with them. I'm not saying that all these business models, all these uh, creativities are universal, but you can expose to different things. Don't be scared, you don't have to learn Chinese to come to uh, Shanghai Zhongyu University. We offer really a class of uh, 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 English courses. And if you want to, the idea is to get you, some of you, for example, spend half a year there taking English classes in my university, but uh, get credit uh, at UW, okay? Graduate courses also, I mean, from the fundamentals also to all the uh, advanced level. We can also uh, join supervise. You can see all these uh, English lectures over there. But uh, you don't have to be there always to study. You can, you can other activities. We send up buddy programs. So you go there, we have someone you know, babysit you for, for make sure we, we give, get you a dormitory. As I said, Delta is direct flight. All the rest, you land, someone pick you up. You have a dormitory and everything is a, it's a modern facility. Uh, you can do others. Uh, if you go to China, you have to play ping pong. So that's a, that's a mandate. <laughs> Otherwise, you, you, you won't fly, so play ping pong. US football doesn't count and uh, Holly Wayne. I don't know what this is, but uh, I see a lot of uh, foreign students, so all the activities. So, uh, yeah. So this is uh, uh, Vince Paul, the dean of uh, uh, Princeton University. He was there, interacted with kids. These are not our students, but uh, these are uh, people, you know, doing drawing paintings on stage. So, I mean, just to conclude, I, I like to encourage you to, to think about these possibilities, and uh, I, I hope that uh, in the coming years, I can see some of you over there uh, on my campus, and uh, you know, we'll send the students here also, so two-way street. All right, thank you. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I noticed that in the earlier section where you're talking about um, putting some of the content at the nodes and having some of the processing happening there. You didn't really mention one of the most important concerns in mobility, which is energy. So there's both the energy of the devices to cache all this content, as well as the energy that uh, they, the constrained energy that they have to deal with processing at the nodes themselves. So is there any, anything you're looking at in that direction? Uh, the question is about whether by caching the content, you will consume more energy and uh, whether that will become a bottleneck. So let me answer this by, by uh, look at the problem in a different angle. 
assuming your caching, the content you're caching is indeed the type of content you will view later, is it more efficient to cache it through broadcasting or is it more efficient to receive them from unicasting? I can tell you, tell you it's almost always broadcasting. Because in unicasting, you have to do a lot of handshake and all that, okay? And broadcasting and uh, receiving is easier. So it bo boils down to this. The intelligence of only caching those that you will need, okay? Now, as I said, your, if you look at the, I, I don't know your behavior, but I, every time I open my phone, I only visit this number of the web page, okay? These are the type of things. So by adding intelligence to a phone, understanding your behavior and analyzing it, you actually will not end up with caching a lot of overhead. If you end up with only caching, but you know, 80% is useful, the other 20% is unuseful, the energy over usage is very limited. Okay, this can be done. But this is indeed by itself a very important question we need to answer. Okay, yes? As a, as a follow up to that, I mean, do you have to cache on a mobile device? I mean, are there other devices that you could cache on? Perhaps like a Wi Fi base station or? Uh, you know, the, the question is whether caching can be done not on the mobile device, but on the uh, a stationary device, uh, access points or base station. I, you know, I, I give a lot of thoughts on that. The answer is that I'm in favor of caching on your mobile device. You know why? It's because what is the most scarce resource? Is the wireless part. It's not the backhaul. Okay. So if you push all the contents to the edge, but not the wireless part, you're not solving my problem. My problem is that my wireless the waves are over, overwhelmed. You see what I mean? So really, uh, the, they are, um, in terms of, uh, the, the Huawei has this uh, so-called edge computing, edge computing, they push everything to the edge. That's, that's being done and uh, it's very efficient. But in terms of over the air traffic is something I'm, I'm concerned. I want to go beyond that. I want to make your phone also an edge device. On your phone, you can do Wi-Fi out, you can do other things, but over the air traffic, can only be reduced by pushing the content all the way to our mobile device. I mean, what about the memory that you would need in this device? I thought memory is cheap. I assume memory is cheap, it's going to be cheaper. I saw computation power is going to be increasing. They all follow most law, so this is exponential growth. But uh, if you look at the uh, communication, we unfortunately were following this channel limit. So our upside is very limited. But the computation at the caching side is exponential. I expect it to grow. Moore's law is coming to an end, right? I mean, oh, really? The end. Well, now you need to tell me that, otherwise I'm still pushing this direction. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, I, I, I can tell you that it's, there will be a sweet spot where you can cash in enough that uh, still does not impose a, a, a big increase on your device cost. Yeah, so, so just to go to them, you know, with massive, even on the capacity side, you know, with massive market, you don't know what the limits. I mean, you have a factor which is non-linear. Right? So spectrum is not the only thing which is linear. So you said 5G. So, so my point is that you really don't know what the answer is. Say even in the broadcast versus unicast, you know, with Zip's law, it's a very long tail. Right? So you're asking the device to, to, if you go broadcast only, I have a lot of junk on my device. Which so, so the question is whether better off just to push for the limit and get more capacity instead of... Uh, so is improving when you go to this right, right, massive right. MIMO. So, you, right. so it's not just spectrum, it right. is you know, on the MIMO part. So my, my answer to that, you know, I mean, those of you need, need to go, need to go. My answer to that actually got me into trouble in one of the conference. So I, I told uh, my bold statement, although I've been in physical layer communications for 20 years, my statement is that physical layer is dead. So, and uh, I, I, people throw eggs at me. Now, I, I all this is not about stop doing increasing capacity or stop building roads. You still need to improve that. But I say that in terms of the return of investment, it's probably better off to put more consideration, at least open up another dimension, which is caching and computing. Uh, okay. For lots of you interested in exchange program, uh, sometime in the early April, we will have some kind of information section about if you are interested in applying this opportunity. The advising office will help you uh, for this uh, process. 
Okay. Thank All right. You. Let's thanks to the speaker again.